All right, here we go. Today we have Dr. Stephen Greer in a follow-up to his explosive interview that he did on Vlad TV a few months ago. Welcome back. Thank you. Good to be with you. Well, your last interview did did huge numbers and caused a lot of controversy in the Vlad TV community. And what was interesting is that the timing of it came out right when the Congress UFO meeting happened in July. So based on what you saw in that congressional meeting, what did you think overall? Well, it, it wasn't really a proper hearing because they haven't been authorized to get subpoena power, but it was just you know, that committee, the oversight committee in the House, was putting their toes in the water. Uh, now, remember, they had two pilots who were there, who, who uh, one of whom I debriefed, uh, Mr. Fravor, uh, and then uh, a person that I had provided information to uh, when he was undercover uh, named Mr. Grush. And, uh, but Mr. Grush was, is not a principal uh, first-hand witness. He was recounting information from uh, people such as the, we have 755 first-hand witnesses and whistleblowers in the Disclosure Project um, community. So that's what that was. So it was a very initial process. There may be another one, but in terms of getting to the bottom of this, you're going to have to have um, hearings that have subpoena power, which unfortunately very recently, I think in the last two weeks, the Speaker of the House, or I guess former Speaker of the House, uh, shot down uh, the request that uh, con the six Congress people asked for subpoena authorization, which has to be approved by the Speaker. So, and the reason that's important, if you don't have subpoena power, the most high value whistleblowers on all this aren't going to come step forward. They're going to have to be compelled through a legal subpoena. So that's one thing just to keep in mind. So it was a very initial. And of course, I've been meeting with uh, some, a number of the people in that committee or people I've been briefing, and they were, you know, had asked me to what questions to ask. But I think that the, you know, the bigger issue is to get to the bottom of something this complex is going to take a much more thorough and, and long-term investigation by the U.S. government. Um, remember, there are two governments. There's the government of that you all know about from your civics lesson, and there's a illegal secret government operating. And this is why people like the chairs and the co-chairs of the Senate Intelligence and Armed Services Committee um, keep asking for information because they don't have it. So the process we're in now is providing through a classified project those the information and the uh, whistleblowers uh, that they want to hear from. But in terms of a public hearing or something that would actually be more on the record and not in a classified, what's called SCIF, a secure compartment information facility, uh, that's still to be determined. That's still something we're working on to get set up. Okay, so give me an example of a subpoena that you would like to see that didn't happen last time. Mm -hmm. Well, there are specific people uh, that should be subpoenaed. For example, uh, in our disclosure project, whistleblower community, over 750 people. Uh, one good example is a man who for 10 years worked in a, a very secret office in the Pentagon dealing with this issue. Uh, and this was in the early 2000s. And he was uh, read into or briefed on 18 of these very sensitive projects, including having gone to a facility out in, uh, uh, near uh, Fort Sill Lawton, Oklahoma, where there was an extraterrestrial vehicle that was had been uh, obtained, downed, and that they were studying. Uh, and uh, another facility outside Seoul, South Korea, uh, that has a very large uh, extraterrestrial vehicle that's in storage. And uh, a lot of the technologies that were being studied, he knows where these uh, bases are. He knows the compartmented code names. All of that. But this is someone who has been so intimidated in terms of coming forward that he's going to have to be compelled through a subpoena and be protected under federal marshal witness protection. So we have dozens and dozens of people like that. And in order for them actually to get what they're asking for, if you hear the members of the Senate and Congress talk about what they're wanting to get, which are information on the actual craft, uh, the bodies of extraterrestrial beings that we have, the technologies that have been reverse engineered, meaning we've studied these craft since the 40s, and now we have man-made craft that go up and around. 
by the way, most of the UFO, UAP sightings people have are not uh, extraterrestrial. They're mostly ours, but people don't know it. Um, for example, uh, so all of that, we know where these are. I have a, a map blacklist site. Uh, black sites. It has 147 uh, black sites on them now. And we're handing that over to the Congress and to the White House. We know where they are because we have people who've worked in the facilities who have given us information, in some cases documents, about what's going on there, what's stored there, what research and development is happening at specific locations. So all of this is to say that there's an enormous amount of data and information we have but you need a mechanism legally to bring it out because, number one, as Mr. Grush rightly pointed out, people have been killed uh, try, getting, trying to get this information out. And then number two, uh, th these, these people are very afraid for the consequences uh, of doing it without some type of subpoena where they're compelled to. In other words, where, okay, they don't have a choice. Now, the Disclosure Project has about 70... Uh, top secret guys who've already come forward. If you go to my YouTube channel, you'll see their testimony. And it's everything people were wondering, you know, where are these people? Well, they're on my YouTube channel. But those are people who are not currently in the system or have were not in a, a very long-term uh, situation, uh, except for a couple of them. We have one witness who's recently passed away who was on a retrieval team where he handled the extraterrestrial bodies or if there were living ones as well uh and that's on our youtube channel sergeant uh, stone so we have these but we have many many more and so for this to actually be done officially under oath is going to require a, a mechanism that they haven't yet completed and i don't know if they will i'm a little concerned uh the senate uh majority leader and others have put together uh a bill that would make all this go to an external panel and the external panel would be a bunch of alleged experts. And normally if you look at the history of the subject, the Robertson panel of 1953, the Condon committee of 1969, every time something like that is set up, it's actually infiltrated by corrupt interests that want to keep this secret. And they come up with a predetermined conclusion, which is more the cover up. So I don't think that panel is going to cut it. I think the only thing that's going to cut it is either we, the Disclosure Project, and we're in the process of setting this up, initiate a civilian lawsuit under RICO against these corporations and individuals, racketeering influence corrupt organization, and sue them in court. And if that gets admitted into federal court, so we just had a meeting with my legal team to pursue that in the event that the Congress drops the ball on this.